Hi, boys and girls. It's Christmas Day. How about that? Yeah. Did you get up early? I'll bet you got up early. And you wanted to get out there and, and see what presents you got. My kids used to count them. Do you count your presents? Yeah, they count them. And if they weren't the same number of presents, they thought it was unfair. Didn't, they didn't ask how much was spent. They just wanted to know there's the same number. So I kind of did some presents, and, and I would... Uh, I would get them and it'd be a bunch of them. Some of them didn't have anything in them but junk and, and such. But uh, I gave them all the same number of presents. Well, then they'd open them up and they'd say, oh, this was junk and they... But all of them had the same number of nice things and they had the same number of junks. They just didn't know which one they were opening. Uh, that they, we called them stupid presents. I didn't call them that. That's what my kids started calling them. And every year we did that for many years. Now, they're in their 50s and 40s. We don't do stupid presents anymore. Um, but always I had at least one present that was a very nice surprise. And they, they would open it up and they'd say, oh, this is junk. And then they'd look at it closer. And they'd say, this isn't junk. This is a nice present. And it was always something that they talked about that they wanted. And I would remember it and I would get it for them. And uh, so that was a part of it. Well, I, we finished our story of Peggy and the Christmas stocking last week. But I have another story to tell you. This is a story of Craig Johns. Craig Johns was a hard worker. He lived in New York City. Some of you may have been to New York City. He lived in New York City and he worked for this business. Now he started out way down doing just hard work uh, at the business and, and being like a gopher. But he worked hard for them. And he got up in the business and he became a vice president. And he worked and worked and worked for the business. And, and it got near Christmas. And this story is called The Man Who Missed Christmas. And, and in this story, this man was kind of like Ebenezer Scrooge, if you've ever heard the story of the Christmas Carol. Looks a little bit like Ebenezer Scrooge, doesn't he? Yeah, well, it's a pretend story, but it's a good story. Anyway, the people he worked with invited him sometimes to come to their house. And he said, no, I don't want to do that. I, I, I prefer to be by myself. And, uh, and, and I like to work. And so he did. Well, it came Christmas time, and one of the people at the office said, Mr. Jones, why don't you come to my house for Christmas? And his name was Mr. Brown. And he invited him to come, and he said, we'll just have a nice, quiet evening. And Mr. John said, no, I've got work I've got to do here. See, it was Christmas Eve. And he said, I've got work I've got to do. I've got to get it done. Boy, it looks like he's got a lot of work, doesn't it? Yeah. He's even dropping some papers he's going to pick up. Now, one thing I want to tell you. In this story, in this man who uh, draws all these pictures, every one of the stories in here, he has a little mouse. I mean a little mouse. And uh, it took me a long time. I'd read this story before and I'd forgotten where the, the little mouse was. But if you look right down here, under that piece of paper, and you can't hardly see it, there's a little mouse there. A little mouse. He knows better about keeping Christmas than Mr. Johns does. Anyway, Mr. Johns was getting ready. Everybody had locked the store. Now, they had a brand new safe in this store. They got a brand new safe. And uh, so uh, they kept all their important papers in there, and they kept their money in there from the business. And uh, so Mr. Jones was, was trying to file away the last of the papers and was having a rough time with it. But he finally got them done, and he put them in the safe. Now, Mr. Brown had said, you don't have to worry. The new safe has been set with a timer so that when you close the door, it won't open no matter what until the morning after Christmas. And that's when the timer's been set to release again. So you, 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 you don't have to worry about it being safe. That new safe is safe. Well, it's kind of like uh, Mr. Johns wanted to be safe from Christmas. So he was just going to stay and work and then go home and, and, and maybe go out to a restaurant uh, on Christmas Day. See, in New York City, there'd be some restaurants that'd be open so he could, he could get a meal. And uh, he didn't have to bother with all the singing and presents and trees and all that stuff that he didn't want to bother with. So anyway, he finished up his work and he started digging into the safe. There's some shelves in there where he could put the stuff and he started digging in there. And while he's busy putting that stuff away, for some reason or other, the door started to close on the safe. And Mr. Johns was still inside the safe. 
and the door closed, and it was dark. There was no light. It was dark in there. Couldn't see. And, and, and he didn't know what was going to happen. He knew that Mr. Brown had said, the safe will be closed, not just for an hour, not just for three, not just for 12 hours, not just for 24 hours, but it was going to be closed for a day and a half. Oh, my goodness, what was he going to do? He thought, will, will there be enough air in here for me to breathe? Um, what about eating? Uh, you know, what am I going to do? And, and he didn't know what to do, but he, he just decided, I got, I've got to sit down and, and try to think. And so he sat down and, and he thought and he thought. He had no idea what time it was because it was dark in there. If he had a wristwatch on, he couldn't see it to know what time it was. And uh, so it was just quiet. Oh, he wanted it quiet, and he was safe from all the noise out there. And he didn't want a bunch of people around, and he was safe from all the people around. And he didn't want a bunch of singing, and he was safe from all that singing. As a matter of fact, he was unsafe in the safe. And, and so he sat there and he thought, and he thought, finally he dozed off a little bit. Didn't really sleep that good, but dozed off a little bit. Now, when he woke up, he didn't know whether he'd been asleep for an hour, or whether he'd been asleep for 10 hours. Because nothing changed. It was all the same. Now he, was, he wasn't having trouble breathing. So he figured must be there was some air able to get in there from the outside. And he was okay. Well, he went on and on through that time. Not knowing what time it was or when it was. Sometimes he would doze. Sometimes he'd have to get up and stretch a little bit because he was getting stiff. There wasn't any bed to sleep on. It was just that hard floor. And finally in the morning, he heard something happening like the, the lock giving on the safe door and and, and 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 it opened now it was opened by a man who had come in uh, to do his work and, and that day and he didn't look inside he just opened the door uh, made sure it was open so that the other employees would be able to get in as they came in on the day after Christmas uh, the light almost blinded Mr. John's in there, and, and he got up and he stretched, and, and he was stiff, and, and he said, ah, I, I got to go get something to eat, and I, I got to go get some sleep, and, and so he went out, and, and he got a taxi, and it took him to his home, and he got a shower, because he felt filthy and dirty, and he got some food to eat, and he lay down and he slept for three, four hours. Then he got up, and he went back to work. He never told them that he was in the safe, because he really wasn't safe. And he didn't tell them, that he, but it did change his attitude about not everything, but, but about some things uh, about Christmas. And, and uh, you remember this picture of him carrying all that stuff? Now, let me ask you this. Do you remember this, where it was? Do you remember where it was? Yeah, it was hanging right next door to the safe. Now, what was hanging on the safe? Do you remember what was hanging on the safe? Right on the door of the safe? Yeah, the words Merry Christmas. It was still there with Mr. Johns in the whole time he's in the safe. That word, he couldn't see it. He, he couldn't be bothered by it. But I'll bet you he thought differently when he was able to see Merry Christmas again. It made the difference. And you remember I told you that little mouse? There's the piece of paper. The little mouse knew how to keep Christmas better than Mr. John's did. I hope you kept Christmas and are keeping it in a good way today. I hope you don't fight over the presents that you may have gotten and somebody else got differently. I hope you thank Mom and Dad for all that they do for you, not just on Christmas, but every day. And if you have company coming, I hope you'll, you'll let them know how happy you are to have them. And you'll wish them a Merry Christmas too. And you'll be able to keep it better than Mr. John's did. And uh, maybe sing some carols. And thank God, too, for Christmas Day, for the church, for the songs you sing, for the Christmas tree, for the presents and the cookies, and the big Christmas meal, but especially for the baby and the manger. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for this day that you've given to us again, this Christmas Day. We thank you for your great love to us in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're going to sing, Down to Bethlehem came the Son of God. The manger there. All right, let me see if I can get my song sheets here. Uh, and I may just sing that third verse because I get mixed up on, on that second one. And uh, let me change glasses here so I can see it.
There's some words there, and I need to be able to see them. Okay? In ages long ago, he said, let there be light. And now in a manger low, a bird of babies cry at night. The King of Kings is he, and Lord of Lords supreme. He truly will, he, he, aha, uh -huh. he true, and truly he will be the restorer of the dream. Oh, he's the king, he's the king, he's the king of kings. Born one night in Bethlehem, the angels of him sing. He's the king, he's the king, he's the king of kings. Born one night in Bethlehem, angels of him sing. Now I'm going to do that third verse again, okay? In ages long ago, he said, let there be light. And now in manger low, a birth cry in the night. The king of kings is he, and the lord of lords supreme. And truly he will be the restorer of God's dream. Oh, he's the king, he's the king. He's the King of Kings, born one night in Bethlehem, the angels of him sing. Yes, he's the King, he's the King, he's the King of Kings, born one night in Bethlehem, angels of him sing. All right, now, I'm going to see you next week, but I'm also going to see you next year. Can you believe that? Yeah, it's going to be January 1st and New Year's Day, and I'll see you, hope I'll see you. You know, and we'll begin our new year together. I have a new story to tell you, all right? We may go back to Critterville. I liked our time in Critterville, so maybe we'll go back there and visit. But I did have another story that I, I might well start and different from that, okay? See you, boys and girls. Bye-bye.